everyone, last, last problem. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation that's in standard form and see if we can get it into graphing form or vertex form, if you will. Um, so once we do that, then we can find the center and the foci. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the x terms and group them. So 4x squared plus, oops, 32x. Let me write that. And I'm going to give myself a little space, and then I'm going to do 7y squared what, minus 56y. And I'm going to send the, neg or the 148 to the other side through subtraction, which is why it's negative now. And the next thing I want to do before I actually complete the square is I need to factor out the GCFs from these terms. So I'm going to have x squared plus 8x here. I'm going to give myself a little room. And then I'm going to have 7. This is going to be what, y squared minus 8y. And that's still going to be equal to negative 148. So let me change pen colors and let's see what we're going to have. If I want to complete the square, half of 8, positive 8 is positive 4. Positive 4 squared is 16. But keep in mind you have 4 times 16, so I'm actually going to add 64 to the other side to balance it. Over here you have half of negative 8 is negative 4, and negative 4 squared is also 16. But I want to really add 7 times 16 to the other side to balance it, so I'm going to add 112 over here. So let me clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to have 4 times x plus 4 squared plus 7 times y minus 4 squared. And when I crunch this, negative 148 plus 64 plus 112, you're going to get 28. And I'm almost there. The next thing I want to do is divide every term by 28. And let's see what we're left with. So I'm ultimately going to have x plus 4 squared over 7. I'm going to have y minus 4 squared over 4. And then I'm going to have 1. So at this point, I can see a squared is 7, b squared is 4, right? So this would tell me a was the square root of 7, and this would tell me b was 2. I'll find c in a moment. Oh, the other thing I can tell is my center, right? If this is x plus 4 and y minus 4, respectively, then my center is going to be negative 4, 4. And with that, I can rule out this option and this option. All right. So then it's going to take us down to, hey, where are the foci? Well, keep in mind, if we look at this, and let me change colors one more time, the larger of the two denominators is 7, and that's under the x-axis, right? Or the x variable, I should say. So when I find this, this c value to get my foci, I'm going to add and subtract it to the x-coordinate, which if I'm looking at my answers between c and d, you can see that they added and subtracted something from the x-coordinate in part c, or at least for the answer in C, but they add and subtracted something to the Y coordinate in part D. So just based off of that, I already know that my answer is gonna be C, but let's play this out just so you, you have this. Anytime you have an ellipse, you can use the formula C squared is A squared minus B squared. So in this case, that's gonna be seven minus four or three. So if C squared is three, that tells me C is equal to the square root of three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add and subtract c to my x coordinate of my center, meaning that the foci, because I want to move left and right off of the center, this would be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 3, and I'm going to stay at the same height of 4, and that's what we're seeing in option c. And so that's how we do number 20. All right, thanks so much, everyone, and good luck on that exam. Bye.